Hello there everyone, it's Carol from the Crafty Emporium. So this uh, is the second time I've been recording this because apparently I can't talk properly. Um, so I have to keep redoing it until I can learn to talk properly again. Oh, the joys of getting older. Okay, welcome back to the A Snippets of Memories journal. So we've gone through basically going through the pages and just doing a little bit of coffee dyeing on them cutting them into the sizes now i just want to cover a couple of th things that i was asked on my group so my front cover is a plastic cover and i was asked which would be easier to decorate the card one or the plastic one in fairness the card one is going to be easier because we can stick paper to the card card to the card um, to the front cover of the journal with the plastic one not so easy to stick it's not impossible but it's not so easy to stick so there are a couple of options for the plastic one but obviously the card covered journal um, cover is easier to decorate all right the other thing that was mentioned was <laughs> there was a lady i think it was diane diana um she hadn't got an equal amount of rings down here so what she said that she'd got 16 rings which of course of course is not divisible by three so what i've suggested to her is that she does five at the top five at the bottom and then she's got six left over in the middle so again if you find that you've got um, a number that is not divisible by three rings then you know just even it out balance it out and have a little less at the top and the bottom and a little bit more in the middle so i hope that that helps maybe some of you now i want to talk to you a little bit more about some of the decorating options and this is something that you need to decide probably as you're going along you can go ahead and you can decorate all of the pages up so that they're ready and just write on write your own memories on there if you're going to follow along with the prompts which are going to be on my facebook group not on youtube um you might want to wait and see what those prompts are and then decorate your page up accordingly there are a couple of things that you can do beforehand though and i have a great big long list here of, of things for you to think about and consider but the main one I suppose that you need to think about first of all is what style of journal do you want to create? If you're vintage, like me, then um, you might want to consider doing it vintage style. Now that's what I'm actually going to do. So I'm going to go with very vintage sort of browns and creams um, and I'm going to put a hint of pink in mine as well just to add a little bit of colour so you might want to think about that and then decide whether you want to decorate your pages up first or just do it as you're going along so i will leave that one entirely up to you there's no right or wrong all right and it's whatever suits you best they have to excuse me because my breathing isn't too great today so i might suddenly take a little bit of a pause and a bit of a <gasps> on the old oxygen <clears throat> okay so let's go to the inside now, one of the things that I've done is I've actually created some of the pages with a tag top. Um, and so what I would do, suggest that you do here, is make yourself a template of the angles that you want your tags to be. And then um, you can trace around that shape so then you know that all the tag ends are all going to be the same sort of shape. I would also suggest that you put reinforcers on the holes for the tag ends because obviously if you use those to lift your papers up if you put um, lace ribbon eyelash trim or any of that in they'll be used to lift that page up and if you don't put the reinforcers on then you can end up ripping the um, the end of the tag now I make my own just because it's easier and I can match the colours up myself then but can you imagine if you do the majority of these in here as tags 
and then have eyelash trim or seam binding or lace sticking out can you imagine what the the edge of the book is going to look like it's going to be really really pretty so um so it's great then to use up i've got loads of little scrappy bits of seam binding so these are going to be ideal for just adding onto the top of these tags the other thing that you can do is you can use washi tape so again i've chosen a selection and there's many more that i've got that i'm i'm probably going to end up using so i've chosen a selection of um washi tapes that i might use i might not use um but so long as they go along with my color theme then it also helps to add a little bit of um protection to the edge of the page as well because you put half of it on one side and then you wrap it round so that it goes on the other side now washi tape does have a little bit of a tendency to not stick for very long so i always put a little line of glue on there and, and I mean just a little line of glue because obviously as you apply pressure the glue will ooze out so I put a little line of glue on here stick my washi tape on fold it round the back put some glue down and then fold it over and stick it down and as I say it just helps to give the edge of the page a little bit more protection especially if you keep thumbing through it all the time just helps to protect it a bit more and of course obviously washi tape can then be added in a decorative way as well onto the page now you can also do stenciling sorry let me take a breath you can also do stenciling on the page too um, so as you can see on this tag one here I've done some stenciling on and it just helps to break up the plainness of the background page and it makes it a little bit more interesting to write on so I've done some darker areas and some lighter areas and some with hardly any on at all which sort of creates a shape for you to write within that tag shape now if I just flip the pages a little Uh, do, do, do. Um, where are you? I've lost it. There we go. So I'd got a full page of stenciling here. So I just repeated the same stencil, one in the centre, and then I did some sort of in the corners. I also did some stamping on the background as well. So if you can see here, I've got one that sort of looks like a little bit like a coffee splodge um, so I've done some stamping too so stenciling and stamping are ideal for just creating a little bit of a background which breaks up that plainness um, and also can give you a shape to write to as well so I could actually follow the shape of the stencil here and write in a sort of semicircle and around that bit up here as well so it makes it a little bit more interesting rather than just lines and lines and lines and lines of writing. Of course, there's the good old napkin, um, and many of us have, many of us have used napkins before as well to create a little bit of a background. Now, with adding the glue onto it, it obviously makes it a slightly more uneven surface to write on. But there's no reason why you can't pull out little areas of designs off the napkin and just apply those randomly onto your page as well. So do consider the napkins that you might have. I've got loads and loads of leftover scrap ends of card. And so occasionally what I do is I use one of my smaller border punches and I just go along and just go and punch all the, the length of those pieces of card so that I end up with pieces like this. Now what I could do here is I could ink these up and again just add them onto the back side of the page to just give a little bit of a decorative edge. I'll just lift that up so closer so you can see. And it just adds a nice little decorative edge onto the end of the page. And again, it will create that nice effect when you close the journal. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, the other things that you could use are lace. 
so um, you know little narrow pieces of lace always look really good sticking out on the ends of the page and of course then if you've got a tab punch and I think I remember rightly so I punch a load out ready um, I'd got some pretty ones so I've got this one which I would then fold in half and I would ink all around the edges and again just add them randomly throughout the journal at different heights so that again it makes it easier and protects the page as you're flipping it open so as I said previously these are all sorts of things that you can be either prepping or adding to your journal in advance must remember to keep that out and pull some of those out um, another thing that you can do is magazine cutouts so you can go through all your old magazines and see if there's any images in there that you want to cut out now one of the prompts that I'm going to put up so a little bit of a heads up here um, for one of the prompts that's going to be coming up is everyone no not everyone most people and I certainly do remember our first kiss our first snog oh god <laughs> it was awful it was not a good kisser but anyway <laughs> it was a very wet kiss I remember that um, so it would be uh, a case of going through magazines looking for lips maybe so then I could add the lips onto the page um, which then obviously signifies a bit of a kiss um, you know you often see uh, lipstick images where someone sort of had lipstick on and then gone and kissed the paper the person whatever and it's left an image you could even do that yourself put some lippy on kiss the paper <laughs> maybe that's a bit too dramatic um, but yeah have a look at your magazine see what you can cut out of course the sticky labels um, and I've, again I've got loads of those so I could pick some of these out and just add little highlights to some of the pages um, adding decorative papers now at the moment it's all a little bit sort of bland so uh, then just bear with me because I did choose I chose a page that I was going to use that was the one and I want to add a little bit of colour to it and so what I've done is I've cut this piece of paper and this was an Artemis uh, digital kit and I've cut this piece of paper just slightly smaller than the actual width and length of one of these thirds that I've got here but what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cut, cut this tag and I'm going to cut it down so that there's just a stub at the end because the last thing we want is a ton of bulk so if I add that onto there and I do that on several of the pages it's just going to add a lot of bulk to the page and so what I can do is I can just trim that off at a very slight angle there and there I'm going to add a little bit of glue Okay, so we just add a thin line of glue down that bottom bit of the tag there and then I'm going to stick that on top make sure that it finishes in line with all the other pages and then if I carefully flip it over I could just apply a little bit of pressure on the back Trying to get that to stick down and there we go so I've now got a little bit of decorative paper on there as well now obviously this back piece is a little bit sort of on the messy side because we've now got this little tab here but there's no reason why this bit of paper that I've cut off that's left over I could just trim that down place glue around the three sides and stick that on the back and then I've got a little pocket as well so I've got a pretty decorative front and I've also got a little pocket on the back 
of course there's no reason why you can't use printed vellum as well um so that you could add a piece of vellum actually on top of the actual page so then you have to flip that back to be able to read the writing that's underneath and then put the vellum back down so that it half covers over the writing that you've already done of course there's other things as well like adding um pockets envelopes postcards so i've got some envelopes that i've already made and then on one of the half pages that i've got i thought about adding an envelope onto there so then i could write on a piece of paper and insert that into the envelope as one of my memories but i could also add the envelope by only gluing it around two sides so then i could also tuck something behind the envelope as well again i don't want to go too mad adding too many different things because i don't want it to be too bulky and too heavy and that's another consideration is that if you're adding things like this to your journal remember especially with those that you've cut into thirds that if this envelope was small enough to fit on this top one up here and I've gone and filled it with stuff and I've tucked stuff behind it I'm actually adding a lot of weight to this piece of paper and it's going to start because whether we like it or not gravity gets to us all um, it will start the gravity will start to pull on that and it will pull it down and it will distort the page and it will also start to tear here where the rings are so anything with any weight try and put on the bottom part of your book rather than the middle or the top one of carol's handy dandy tips there um, now the other thing that you can use as well is the likes of ledger paper and when it comes to things like listing films that you like, music that you like, books that you've read, it's sometimes handy to have somewhere where you can write a list and so ledger paper is great for writing lists and if you actually write on these pieces of paper and then stick them into the journal after you've written on them rather than sticking it in and then writing on it at least you know then that you've written it up sort of nice and neat okay so there's all sorts of little things that you can start to think about how you're going to decorate it up the colors that you're going to use and of course as well we can alter these to different lengths so as you can see i've got a short one there which i'm going to actually pull out because what i tried to stamp on there didn't stamp very well um, I've done a bit of text uh, background stamping on that one I'm going to make that one into a tag so you can see I've already started going through part of the process of starting to decorate it up before I actually start writing in but I've decided that I'm going to leave it I'm just going to do little bits and pieces like I've already done and leave it until I get to my prompt and then I'm going to decorate my page up fully so that I know then that it matches up with the prompt as well. Okay, Whew, I think I've prattled on enough for today. I um, hope you find that helpful. Make yourself some notes, keep them with your journal just to remind you. And I'll see you all again in tomorrow's video, which will, which I think, I think will be the last one that I will do. And to start you off if you want to follow along with the prompts then you will need to join the facebook group for the prompts that i've got lined up throughout october if you want to go ahead and go and do your own thing then that's absolutely fine um and then i'll come back occasionally and show you a bit of an update of how my journal's starting to look okay that's it for now thanks very much for watching and i'll see you all again tomorrow bye for now